Hey, what's up, guys? I just wanted to give a quick shout out to each and every single one of you guys that's been supporting me on YouTube. Seriously, it means a lot. One of my main goals is to make YouTube a full-time job in the future, and we have been doing so many great things on the channel. All of your guys' support have allowed me to do massive upgrades, and we most recently hit 200,000 subscribers. That was unthinkable to me. I can't believe they were growing so fast, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for supporting me. It means a lot, and... It really makes each and every single day better going on YouTube, reading your comments, and I, I just really appreciate it. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake at KA Tag, and today we're back at again with the original log bait deck that's been viable since the start of the game over three years ago. You've got log and zap bait cards with the princess, the goblin barrel, the inferno tower, and the goblin gang. I love this deck because it's been around since day one of playing, and it's never really fallen out of the meta. So if you guys are thinking about picking up a new deck, a deck that's gonna stay around forever, no matter what happens, this would be a great deck to pick up. Log bait is just super fun, very high skill cap, and you're always gonna get better playing it. So let's go jump straight into some games and assert some dominance with one of the best log bait decks of all time. And a huge shout out to all of you guys that are using Critic Code Sir Tag in any Supercell game. All money made from Critic Code Sir Tag goes directly back into improving and growing the channel with my editing, my new camera, my new iPad, my new computer, Thank you guys for helping me grow and thank you for supporting the channel. All right, guys, we got a game against Ursa. We're gonna sauce out of good luck and I'm gonna go for an ice spirit. So what does Ursa have in store for us? Oh, just a thanks. Cordial, sir. Whoa, okay, archers. Is it gonna be 2.9 expo or is it gonna be something spicy? Looking like something spicy because we see a mega minion and there's no expo deck with mega minion and archers. Let me tell you, if I see that, I'm just gonna freak out because I've never seen that before. Anyway, we can go in for a night here just so the archer locks onto that. He's going to Tombstone in the back, expecting us to just dro drop a whole bunch of bait cards towards him. You know what? I'm going to take that advantage that I have and go in for a Goblin Gang in the left-hand side. I can also keep our Princess alive with uh, Inferno Tower. This seems a little bit weird, but dropping Inferno Tower at the river to keep the Princess alive is not terrible. Because he's going to have to still drop units on top of our Princess since he just used arrows. Unless he's got like 10 different spells. Princess is going to lock onto his tower and then he's going to drop something into the Inferno Tower. So the Inferno Tower, it's going to kill Archers. And it's also going to be able to go and kill the baby dragon. So that's going to be a 7 elixir investment for 5. We take those. Wait, he's going to golem? Wait, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? If I goblin barrel plus knight, you have to arrow that. And then you can't hit the princess. Then you're going to spend way too much elixir. And then we can just infer it out your, your golem. So that's what I like doing against golem players. Spending a lot of elixir on the other side, so even if they have lightning, they're going to be in a really bad spot. We're waiting to last possible second with our Inferno Tower, so then when he lightnings, he's not going to be able to kill all of its HP. I'm going to go for an Ice Spirit as well, just so that we can keep the Golem from hitting the Inferno Tower for a little bit longer, and we should be fine for that reason. All right, we need a Knight here. I don't like doing that early, but it was a necessary precaution to be uh, made. The, the issue here is the baby dragon, whatever he spams afterward, if he cycles like a mini pack on us, we would have to like log in princess or potentially go in for our goblin barrel. So that's the one disadvantage of cycling the goblin gang like I did. But that ice spirit allowed us a little bit longer time with the inferno tower alive. So we were able to make something happen. The inferno tower gave us more damage, so we took less damage from the golem as a result. So he's going to go in for arrows. I need to get more damage before he goes in for his next golem push because... We know that if he lightnings the Inferno Tower, he's guaranteed death damage. Guaranteed value on us. And we can't have that consistently happen here. So I'm going to try to go in for an Ice Spirit. And then I want to go in for a Knight so that we can keep the Princess alive. Let's go. That's what you like to see, guys. Double Princess domination. And then he has to arrow. And then what happens when you arrow, dude? What, what is the reality that you have to face? Could it possibly be that you can't defend against the Goblin Barrel as effectively? I don't know. Let's find out. So if we go for a log and clean up the skeletons and then have the Goblin Gang come through, we are forcing out way more Elixir. He's still not able to go in for his Golem Push. And as a result, guys, we'll probably be able to win this game. So it's all about keeping up the pressure, forcing out more Elixir from your opponent. And then they can't go in for the Golems. And if they can't go in for the Golems, they can't win the game. We bamboozle them. We drop it in the opposite lane, opposite spot the side that he wasn't ready for, and all we have to do is just cycle back to a log. So what are we gonna do? Hold up. Oh, actually, we need to cycle back to uh, more than just a log. Never mind. I'm gonna have to infer a tower. My math is terrible, guys. How did I think that I only had to cycle back to a log? We're in infer a tower here, the golem's gonna explode, and I'm gonna go for a knight. That was such a meme that I thought I could get away with just a log. Log does only 84 chip, if you guys didn't know. So if you didn't know, now you know. 
Anyway, we can go for our Goblin Gang here, shut down the Baby Dragon, and we should be able to walk away with a win. That was a crazy, crazy game. He went in for arrows on offense, and then he had no answer to the Goblin Barrel. That was a little bit closer. <laughs> but you know what? We still win the game, and I'm happy about that. Let's just look at the end result and completely forget about how I just miscalculated that. <laughs> at least we're 5-0. We'll move on to the next one, and hopefully we can play better there. We'll go for an Ice Spirit here. We're going to see what's up. This guy's going to go for a Hog Rider. He's probably going to Earthquake me. My body is ready, sir. So if you want to go in for a hog rider like that, we could definitely go in for a goblin barrel on the left hand side, expecting you to probably not have tornado, but rather safe than sorry for right now. I'm going to go for our goblin barrel. He's going to have arrows actually. Ooh, arrows bats hog. Seven wins in a grand challenge and I have no clue what he's running right now. After we see arrows hog rider, the possibilities are endless. Like he could have Pekka, he could have Mega Knight, he could have something funky, man. So I could rocket this Musketeer just to get some extra chip damage on the tower and then keep our Knight alive, forcing him to spend more Elixir. And he's got Sparky. Whoa, okay. Surprise! 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 So Sparky Hog Rider. <laughs> I can safely say that I wasn't expecting that one, Chief. So I need a Princess here. Going for a Goblin Gang Surround on top of his Sparky. Use our Inferno Tower on top of his... Okay, I thought Giant, but Royal Giant works too, I guess, man. Wow, you're crazy, aren't you? So you're going to go for a Zapparino. I can just go in for a Knight after. I think that we're okay. The Knight's going to be able to take up a couple hits from the Sparky, so it's not going to be that bad. So I need to go in for an Ice Spirit after, obviously. That is one thing that is a consideration. With the Princess, I think that we're going to be able to slow down the Sparky and reset it and not take any damage. So I could either go in for another Princess on the right-hand side to finish off his Musketeer, or I could Log. I'm going to elect to go for the Princess and eat up the damage, because if I lose a Tower, I lose this game, guys. So we need to play way more defensive. And I don't think I've ever seen a Sparky Royal Giant Musketeer deck before, but we're seeing it right now for the first time, guys. So he's going to go for Bats on the Princess for a plus one interaction, unfortunately, for us. And then we have to go for an Inferno Tower to clip his Hog Rider. If I had a better cycle where I had Ice Spirit and Goblin Gang, I feel like I would have probably wanted to drop that instead. But we could go for a Knight and Goblin Gang if your RG is in the back or something. I think he's probably going to, so I want to go in for Knight Goblin Gang and just preemptively do that. Yes! Okay, please do not have another small spell. Okay, he's got barbs. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate. Not gonna lie. I predicted the R Royal Giant, but I wasn't able to get as much value as we wanted. Can I kill the RG? I think we definitely can. So if I go in for a Furry Tower here, and then I go in for a Knight, and then I go for a Goblin Gang, I don't think that we're gonna take much damage. Even if he zaps, I think we should be able to kill it. Especially if I log it back with the Knight. And then since he went in for a zap, I don't know if he's gonna have a phenomenal answer to this, right? The Princess and the Goblin Barrel at the same time. You can't arrow them both at the same time, dude. So you're going to go and drop bats. We're gradually, slowly, but surely overcoming this matchup. I think that the Hog Rider dies here. He's probably going to go for barbs. Oh, wait. Why are you overcommitting? Yeah, you're definitely going to go barbs on the right. Can I get something down? Oh, he missed the Musketeer! No way, dude. No way. No, no way. We can go for Goblin Gang then. And then the Princess is still locked onto the tower. Guys, I can go in for another Goblin Barrel now. Bait out another set of arrows. Ice Spirit here on the lane that he might go for a Hog Rider. Get back to an Inferno Tower. I think we can beat this deck. This is crazy stuff, man. The shenanigans here are unparalleled. Uncharted territory for me. Christopher Columbus of Clash Royale is the guy that we're playing against. The one that discovered America and the craziest deck of all time. So I can go log to go and kill his Barbarians. I'm trying to cycle as many Princesses and separate them so he's not able to hit them. I think we have to go in for Inferno Tower here instead of in the middle so then the bats don't get on top of it. I need to go in for Goblin Gang now because he zapped me. He was able to reset. But the Princess is still alive, dude. So we're able to go in for a Goblin Barrel Ice Spirit. You're not able to hit everything with the arrows. That's the wave, dude. And then we're going to be able to kill the Musketeer. Let's go. If we kill the Muskie and get a Knight down, that would be ideal. The Princess is locked onto the tower. He doesn't have any answer to this. It's going to be game, folks. So as long as we defend the virginity of the Princess for one more hit and then we Rocket Cycle, we win the game. GG, well played, and peace out. This was an insane game for 7-0 and in a grand challenge. And I could not be more ecstatic and ebullient to win it, man. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm just ready. My body is prepared for the next crazy deck that we get thrown at. Because I didn't think that it was possible to play against the Sparky Hog Rider Royal Giant deck with arrows and zap. But now, anything's possible. 2020 has evolved the world into the craziest thing ever. <laughs> So we're going to go into this game with an Ice Spirit and a Goblin Barrel, and we're going to see what Robo's got in store for us. Can we annihilate a Robo Man? A Robotics Evolution? I don't know, dude. So it's all about his perspective. What is he going to be doing? Is he going to be going in for a Golem? Or does he have the perspective of waiting? Okay. 
He's gonna go in for a goblin uh, gang. We're gonna go for goblin gang here. He's gonna go in for a clone, maybe. He's got giant skeleton, so I need to go in for a princess. Oh, this is tough. I need a goblin barrel on defense against the cannon cart, or it's gonna lock onto the princess and kill it. Did we push it away? Yeah, we pushed it away with the goblin gang. Guys, that defense was sick. We made it work. That felt real good. So he's gonna drop something on the princess. I don't wanna spend any extra elixir. I'm just gonna let it happen. It's gonna match Garcher, so that means I can knight, make sure it doesn't target our tower, it targets the knight instead. Oh, I lied. <laughs> and you should be sorry, Jake. Okay, guys, I lied to you. Will you ever forgive me there? Hopefully. Maybe, maybe someday you'll find it in your heart of hearts to forgive me. I'm gonna go for a Goblin Gang at the river. We're gonna try to get some chip damage here. He's gonna go in for... I don't know, he's just gonna eat it. Ah, he's not gonna go in for anything. I was like, he's gonna drop something, right? He's like, nah, sir, not today. <laughs> Wait, we could rocket that. I think it's better to rocket it so then we get it out of the way so then the princess is able to hit all the Night Witch bats. It's definitely worth it. So he's not able to do anything here and we get ship damage on the tower and we don't have to worry about some funky clone arrows push that he's about to drop. Um, could I infer a tower here? Just kill that a little bit quicker. And then maybe keep the princess. No, the princess is going to die for sure. Can we log it to kill it? I think so. And then we get ship damage on the tower and then it doesn't get a hit. Heck yeah, brother. That's what we like to see. All right, so I think we have matchup advantage. I think we have a very definitive matchup advantage if he doesn't have multiple small spells. Plus, the great thing about this is he, we know for a fact that he doesn't have the correct cards in cycle to deal with our goblin barrel, right? He feels very uncomfortable with this every single time. So he's going to go for a tornado. Okay, he actually has something, but it's, it's not really great. It's not the, the best card for him. We're dropping our knight off to the side as well, if you guys didn't notice that. Always want to drop it off to the side, so then um, you don't line it up with the magic archer that's coming through. So yeah, we just got back to another princess. We knight here. I think one of them locks on, but it's fine. We can reset it with an ice spirit. And then we can go for a goblin gang afterward, and then we can log. He just used tornado on offense, so that means that he precludes any potential of really making any big plays. So we can go for a goblin barrel on offense. We can go in for a princess on offense as well. The princess is going to die before the magic archer shoots it, right? Ooh. Or after the magic archer shoots it. I thought that the princess wouldn't get a hit off, but uh, we're, we're doing really well, man. We're going to win this game. We're going to go like 8-0 right now. Heck yeah. That's what we like to see, boys. I'm going to rocket the tower. The goblin cage is not going to do anything. And because we stacked princesses so well, and we were able to use a goblin barrel on defense against the cannon cart, that was one of the most clutch plays ever, to push it back, stop it from targeting the princess at half HP. Like, this game has been insane. We're playing really out of our mind today, and uh, yeah, I just can't wait to go into the next one and keep asserting dominance. All right, we're going to sauce out a good luck here. We're going to see what's up. We're going to see what's happening. We're definitely going to go for a goblin barrel off to the side. Try to get some sublime damage, see what he's going to do. Not going to go in the same lane as all of the skeletons on the left. And then he goes Royal Delivery. So he still takes damage from the Goblin Barrel. You have to be so quick with that card, man. All right, it's going to be Royal Hogs plus Royal Delivery plus Skeleton Barrel. This deck is so toxic, man. Okay, we need to go in for a Goblin Gang after that connects. Or we can log. I'm going to log it, actually. I think it's generally better that way. Unfortunately, the Princess didn't hit exactly as that uh, exploded. That would have been amazing. Firecracker, I don't know what you're doing, man. We can activate King Tower here. Wait, the Firecracker's going to hit my Goblin Gang. No! Wait, the Goblins are still doing damage. What? We can activate King Tower and then log back the Firecracker and the Royal Hogs. Guys, this is working out really well. Heck yeah, man. I can't believe Steven the Stab Goblin got all that damage on the left. Sir, we need to give you a raise. How do I repay you for such a thing? That was insane, guys. So he's not going to get the Royal Delivery down in time, so he's going to take damage. Most of the time, that's what happens. Unless they're really quick with it. Oh my goodness, he's going to eat it like a champion. Tasty. He doesn't even care. What are you doing? You're building up this insurmountable push on the right, I guess. This is going to be a circus. This is going to be a clown fiesta. When you see a control deck eat that amount of damage, I never know what to think. So I want to go in for a knight. Go and surround the skeleton so it locks onto that instead. I'm going to log this back, and I think I want to go for a really high Inferno Tower. So then the Firecracker and the Royal Hogs and everything go towards that. So then the Firecracker doesn't kill my princess. The princess... Yeah, it doesn't kill my princess, guys. Heck yeah. <laughs> totally. That was what was meant to happen. Okay, we can Ice Spirit Goblin Barrel. He's going to miss the Royal Delivery again. Let's go. He's definitely going to miss it. You're not going to hit it on time. You're going to take damage. Let's go, baby. 
Oh, the prince is locked under the tower. Firecracker, can you not kill me for the like 20th time in a row? That would be awesome. Okay. Inferno Tower should be placed lower. I, I was hoping that he would uh, <laughs> just, like, not Earthquake in time. Or drop the same Earthquake placement that he did last time. Wait, the skeleton allowed us to go and kill the Firecracker. Firecracker, that's karma for doing what you did to us earlier. Heck yeah, man. So I'm going to go for Inferno Tower just to make sure that we can shut down that a little bit quicker. And then I can log. Why is he going in the opposite lane? Does he actually think that he could feasibly take out a 2,000 HP tower in that short amount of time? I am flabbergasted. I do not understand. I will never understand, but I will walk away with a win. Thank you very much, sir. Your firecracker earthquake does not take out the right-hand tower. And this is nine wins into the grand challenge. I can't believe it. That was a crazy game. I guess people just play this really overpowered deck and they can get really high with it because the deck that he's playing is quite possibly the best deck in the game right now and it is so easy to play. So we're gonna go for an Ice Spirit here. We're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what's happening. This guy is not gonna drop anything. Man, it feels so weird. Wait, what are you doing? You said go the Bomb Tower to stop an Ice Spirit? Did you have a horrible hand or something or what's going on here, brother? What are you doing? We wanna go in for a Goblin Barrel so we're able to get some chip damage on you. And you've got Night Witch Bomb Tower. So I'm excited for this matchup. I have no clue what we're facing. How about now? Oh, okay. I see what we're facing. We're facing the Dirty Elixir Golem Rage players. So I want to log this around half HP so then I can damage down the blobs. And then get my Elixir a little bit quicker so I'm able to defend. If you guys notice that log timing, that is how you defend against Elixir Golem. If you don't do that, you will lose the game and it will feel horrible. Oh my gosh, he's going in for arrows too. He's insane. Brother, you have no answer to this right now. You dropped your arrows. What are you going to do? The knight is tanking for the goblin barrel. If you go for an electro wizard, you have no elixir for the princess. Oh my goodness gracious. This is going great. So I can go for a goblin gang on top of the electro to shut it down as well. And we still get more counter pressure with the goblin gang too. That's going to give us a lot of damage. The princess will die to the bomb tower, but at what cost, man? At what cost? Unfortunately, when we dropped our Inferno Tower, it was going to be a little bit more spicy. We could have lost the game if we messed up our log timing. So, just need to be really cognizant of that, guys. Second form, around half HP. Then when you log, you damage the third form of the Elixir Golemites, too. If I rocket that, it's really not worth it. I want to wait for him to drop more. We know he's going to drop more. He has to. He's an Elixir Golem player. He has to stay true to his nature. There it is, man. He's dropping way more. He's going to drop an Elixir Golem in front of this, too. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So we can drop our rocket, hit the Night Witch and everything. And then I think that I just want to go for a Log and Goblin Gang here. I don't want to drop anything else because the Princess is going to stay alive. I don't have to Inferno Tower, believe it or not. You don't actually need to if your opponent overcommits like that. And uh, yeah, you're going to just be able to keep the Spear Goblins alive. Go Princess at the River in the opposite lane. Oh, he dropped, he dropped Bomb Tower. He actually outplayed me there. He finessed me a little bit. Dropping the Bomb Tower, predicting the Princess. What are you doing? Since when do Elixir Golem players that spam at the river make a good play like that? That was insane, brother. Anyway, we can go for another Ice Spirit. We can have that Knight. We know he's going to go drop something near his tower, so I don't want to go in for uh, Princess at the River then. But we're always able to outcycle him, guys. He's not able to defend this. Goblin Barrel is going to get on the tower. He's not back to any means of defending that. And then we can just Rocket Log. Rocket Log does take him out. So I actually don't even want to log here. Wait, you've got Clone? You've got Clone Night Witch Elixir Golem? What are you doing? I guess it's really toxic, guys. Like, looking at his deck, he's going to have uh, Night Witch Bats. He's going to have so much crap that he can clone up. And if he eliminates my uh, Princess with Arrows, maybe, just maybe, he's able to take my tower. GG, well played, and peace out, man. Pleasure playing against you.